Hi, I'm Ranger Karen with the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. We're one of more than 400 parks that make up the National Park Service, but we're the only one that's dedicated to America's unique art form of jazz. And we're here in New Orleans where jazz was born. I'd like to welcome you to the golden hour. The golden hour is the time when the light is golden and the music is too. Uh, tonight's concert is going to feature Don Vappi and Friends, and the conversation will be guided by Nick Spitzer, the producer and host of American Roots. If you're watching live, please uh, put your comments and your questions in the, in the comments, and I hope you'll all share this with your friends. With that, I'm going to turn things over to Nick Spitzer. Enjoy the show. Lord have mercy, Boku, Ranger Karen. This is American Roots Live from the old Luthgen's Dance Hall in Marigny Studios, a few blocks down the river from the French Quarter. And we call this the golden hour. We want you to send us questions online if you've got them. Make suggestions, but not too many suggestions. Tell us where you're uh, writing from all around the world. In-house, we've got Don Vappi and friends. Don is the great New Orleans Creole jazz banjo man. He's known for keeping the traditional sound alive but he can take it from New Orleans to Haiti, jazz to funk, R&B to Sinatra. So look out, listen up for Don Vappi and friends.
What is the matter now? Man, what's the matter now? That's that's uh, Placid used to sing that. Uh, Placid Adams. Yeah, I got that from him. Man. Yeah, I guess the question right now in the world is, what's not the matter now? That's right, <laughs> man. Don, oh. who we got here? I, you say it's Don Vappy and friends, but I assume that you don't have any enemies, so who are the I, friends? Well, I have friends and cousins. My cousin Richard Moten on the bass. Yeah, okay. And then our good friends over here, Clarence Johnson the third, Clarence... We, the last time we played a gig before all of this, it was me and Richard and Clarence. All right. It sure was. That's right. So this and is a big reunion. It's a big reunion. <laughs> and Mike Esnault on piano. All right. It wasn't long before that gig I was playing with Mike. So. All right. Well, we're glad that you're all here tonight. This is we're great. Happy to be together it, playing. They're together. cheering all around the world for you. We we want people to send in their questions and tell us where they're at and what's going on and all that. There. Please do. All right. Please so, do. So what what do we got? What's next, gentlemen? Well, not to put you right back to work. I mean, we can do some chin well, music okay. later. Clarence actually wanted to play a tune, so I figured we'd do that. Let's feature him on this. It's called Blues My Naughty Sweetie Gives to Me. All right. Which is my favorite title of all time. All right. <laughs> Means so many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in isolation. No, you, got it. you got it. Wherever you want it, bro. What?
Clarence calls the tune, and it's a good one. Man. Yeah. Hey, listen, the notes coming in are pretty good, too. You cats sound good, and you look like you're having fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are having fun, man. It's 70, how many days? <laughs> how many days? 70. I've, I've been going online every day for 70 days consecutively. I, I, I know. You've been keeping people but, aware. Listen to some more notes here. Red Hot Banjo. Ooh. All right, all right. This is like this is like 1950s comments. Red hot, man. You cats, red hot. And then, how about piano sounds killer? I think that's kind of 70s, 80s. But that's cool. We got all those listeners in there in Rhode Island, Kansas, Brazil, Philadelphia, right. Cape Town. That's South Africa, Maine, Boston, Columbus, Ohio, Cranford, New Jersey, New York, Austin. This sounds like a country western song. Mexico City, Virginia Beach, Baton Rouge, Argentina, and Ninth Ward. I wanted to tell Clarence, huh. Ninth Ward, uh, they're hanging in with us, you know, so, so that's a good thing. Nobody yes, from sir. Slidell, man? Uh, well, you know, they're a little <laughs> slow out there sometimes. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, it, it's great you all are you're kicking it like that, and it's got a kind of a swing in, a little bebop and a little swing in. That's, that's a nice mix you got there. It, it, we, we can't help it. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, I'm so sorry, Don. It's, <laughs> as, uh, as we say down here, it's all up in there. Yeah, no, it's fine. Well, listen, I, I know you've been doing a lot of uh, uh, Creole jazz over the years, and we'll talk more about it later, but could you do us something that fits the kind of classic Creole jazz uh, stuff you've been doing lately? Yeah, and for really a long time, I guess. You, yeah, you know, there's, uh, I'll do a Kid Ori tune. Mm. This one's actually uh, this is one of the tunes on my new album, The Blue Book of Storyville. Mm -hmm. But uh, this tune, there was another Kid Ori tune. It's funny, I'm not going to do that one. But I remember when Sybil heard me play it in church, she kept, ooh, ooh. So I didn't know I was saying. Oh, Sybil Kine, who understands yeah, the Creole. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the one you're going to, the X-rated Creole song. Well, I'm not going to do that one. No, this is the, uh, this 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 the PG-rated Creole song. This one's song. not triple X. This is just one X. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, it's about the nasty uh, con-con. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dame pedo, ça t'a pépé. Oui, la guerre a commencé. Tout pas dans le monde, pas dans le genre. Madame pedo, le plein cancan, c'est le cancan. En la réclamant, pedo, je vais l'aimer vous. Pedo, oh, madame pedo, le plein cancan, c'est le cancan. Pedo, en la réclamant, pedo, je vais l'aimer vous. Pedo, oh, madame pedo, le plein cancan. Ça t'a pépé, oui la gueule a commencé Tout pas le monde, tout pas le genre Madame Pédo, le plein cancan, c'est la cancan Pédo, en la réclément Pédo, que pas le mêvou Pédo, oh Madame Pédo, le plein cancan, c'est la cancan Ça t'a pépé, 
puis la guerre a commencé. Oh, parlons monde, parlons gens. Madame Pedro, plein quand quand, c'est la gaga. On la replay bon. Il est pas le même vous. Oh, Madame Pedro, plein quand quand, c'est la gaga. On la replay bon. Madame Pedro, le plein coco, come on. Yeah, it's a song. It's See, a song about a uh, a gossiping lady across the other side of Claiborne Avenue. Yeah, digging deep into it. I, I love that stuff. It, it, it's so jaunty and funny and old school. And it, it just feels right for the 21st century. And he was fun. Yeah, Kidori, when he was singing, he sounded like he was fun, man. Yeah, and of course he was a tailgate trombone man from up there in Woodlawn Plantation back when, and he'd been a I think in the building trades in the city. He did masonry work and all that sort of stuff so but there's that tradition of work and play in new orleans all so good meanwhile somebody's written these guys are so good they could cure the virus mm. that's quite a compliment i, that. I think I'll take that. so you're stronger than clorox <laughs> <laughs> it tastes better too no doubt it goes down easier <laughs> oh, I, know. I know i'll put my mask back on for that after that one. okay <laughs> you know uh, don tell us a little bit about your your relationship to the banjo over the years Oh, okay. I thought you were going to ask me to explain what hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, when I said um, on relationship, I wasn't sure what you'd be yeah. thinking, but you know. Well, <laughs> my, well no, I, you know, I, you know, I grew up kind of disliking it yeah. from the social aspect of it being connected to all those Jim Crow things and all. But actually, yeah. when I realized it was an instrument that had come from Africa and was part of, uh, it was actually a big part of our culture right. by way of Haiti and everything. So I. But even before that, before I realized I didn't, I liked it. I had, when I first worked at Worldline's Music Store, I played a banjo, and the percussiveness and the the the, uh, the pitch, the whole thing, it it's just it's a funky sound, like the funky tunes in the '70s when I was playing guitar and muting those strings. Mm -hmm. This would have been perfect. This would have been perfect for that. Without you could have been in James Brown band. band with that. I could have been. <laughs> <laughs> it's a coulda, shoulda, woulda. Get up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, when you mute the strings, it really sounds majorly I, funky. That's, I'm not even muting them. It's just a staccato sound. With, oh, yeah. With a guitar, you had to kind of... Yeah, yeah. That's muted. Prevent that sustain thing, yeah, but the but banjo, I, you can do the it. The banjo is natural for that. Yeah. See? Well, it's a it's a kind of a percussion instrument too. I exactly. mean, you got that. Yeah, it could have a snare drum right there. A drum with strings. I like it. I like it. So, uh, so in your family though, I mean, w w where do the Vappies connect to jazz over the years? Because I know you didn't start with it, you but you kind of recovered it. It seems to me. Well, it was it was more on my mother's side. It was the Josephs from mm -hmm. uh, from Donaldsonville, St. James area. That's mm -hmm. where my mom was born up, up in river. that, in yeah. that area. And um, in fact, that's how Richard and I are related. Through the Josephs. You're related to Richard, huh? Yeah. Are you related to anyone else in the band? or Only musically. Uh, I was going to say, no, or not that we know of. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, you uh, yeah. know. <laughs> now you sound like Will Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> was he always cracking well, jokes? Oh, him and Papa John, man, they yeah. knew each other. But the stories, I'm not going to get into stories here. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in New Orleans, I mean, everyone jokes about who's related to who all the time. Right. And there's a, a, a story of a, 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 two guys watching a second line go by and somebody's playing trumpet and says, hey, hey, look, that's how you call it on trumpet. And the guy says, no, 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 that's how you call it, brother. Right. <laughs> that's kind of that... Uh, uh, what should we say? Uh, forgetful intimacy that we that's, have around that's here. That's Frog Joseph did that to me, and Wendell Brunius. Is that right? Wendell and I were together on this gig, and Frog was there. And Frog says he looked at me. He said, "Hey, what you call it? Come here. <laughs> Go back there and tell how you call it to come over. I won't talk to her." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm what you call it. And when well, was it? When well, was I? Well, uh, what you call the next tune you gentlemen would like to play? Actually, you know, since we did that Kid Ori tune, which is very much influenced by, I think, the Caribbean and Haitian rhythms and stuff, I, I kind of want to move forward and do something that you don't normally expect on a banjo. Uh, the, the standard called St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. How's that? Y'all want to play that? We haven't done this in a long time. I hear no complaints. <laughs> no, nobody said no. Well, no one said no, because nobody said no means not, no, I'm not going <laughs> to.
Yeah. They're cheering all over the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, listen, they're cheering in Slidell. Don't. Let me take my mask off for that and say wow. it again. They're cheering. <laughs> There's a Slidell watch party. All right. Uh, we provoked them, Don. All right. <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, we're getting all the banjo fans. The banjo emojis are flying. Oh, cool. I didn't know there was a banjo emoji. I'll have to admit that. But That's right, man. We got together and made a... <laughs> yeah, you in lobbied there. for that emoji. You got, it, you got that you emoji. You got to have a banjo emoji. Yeah, you got to represent all the time. Uh, you know, And there were getting questions like, uh, how is your banjo tuned, your tuning? Uh, a standard tenor tuning. Yeah. In fifths, C, G, D, A. Okay. So what makes it a tenor banjo? Uh, well, it costs $10. Oh, no. <laughs> come on. <now. laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, it's called a tenor. It's, got a, sh it's a shorter neck, and uh, it's like a tenor guitar is tuned the same way, mm -hmm. the, that standard. They, they came about around 1905. Okay. And uh, before that, the necks were longer, and, you know, you have the five string and the the same size neck without the fifth string is called a plectrum banjo. Mm -hmm. And they all have alternate tunings. A lot of people play this banjo with a guitar tuning, like the top four of the guitar, like mm -hmm. D, G, B, and E, which is the way I started with it. But then I got hold of a guitar banjo with six strings. So the gitanjo, is it? Or uh, the bantar, I forget. Or a bantar. <laughs> it's been called all kinds of things. Yeah. But, um, so have I. But, I mean, this is a... <laughs> I just thought I'd tune it tenor one day, and what I found out is it's probably the preferred banjo in the New Orleans bands because of the horn players, because this open open fifths tuning seems to cut through, to cut through the horns a little better without really banging on it, because you have, that's three octaves there. Mm -hmm. I mean, two octaves. One, one octave. Instead of having, you have, like spreading out a chord on a piano. Nice, know? nice. So. And of course, I know you've actually played five string. You played with bluegrass bands. Yeah, but I kind of faked it. Oh, and maybe you played bass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can fake it with the piano. Yeah. But I, I played bass with Pappy Sherrill and the Hired Hands. Oh my God, that's yeah. big time. That's Carolina Coastal Sat Piedmont them, bluegrass. Yeah. Yep. Wow, you 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 earned your stripes in that well, one. Well, Alan Jabor said I did okay. Yeah, yeah, the great uh, man from the <laughs> Library of Congress uh, blessed you for that one. Well, you know, you're an innovator in a whole other different way in that uh, uh, somebody wrote here, and I know what they're speaking of, they give Don credit for his live streaming daily to get many of us through COVID-19. He's the real-life Mr. Rogers. <laughs> you know, it was going good till you got to that last part. Uh, but it is, a <laughs> it is a beautiful day in your neighborhood. You sit out in the morning on your porch, you're drinking coffee, you're waving to the people going by in their cars. The roosters are crowing. The birds are chirping. <laughs> people are calling in. That's great. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, I, and now we're to the point, because, you know, I make my coffee in a Bialotti pot. Oh, yeah. So I have a few people from Italy that come on every morning. Yeah. And um, and now there's someone in, uh, in Salt Lake City, who, him and his wife, watch me for when the, the uh, espresso kicks in. Because <laughs> it's a three-shot espresso thing. So uh -huh. I, I say, hey, how y'all doing? You know? And then about 20 minutes later, man, it's really, you know. <laughs> well, you know, they, they, they sometimes they moderate the caffeine out there in Utah. Maybe they're wondering, you know, how much of a no, caffeine I, addict I you I got are. a good friend, Elizabeth, over at Campbell's Coffee, and she roasts her coffee every uh -huh. day. Okay. So I get the real deal. Yeah. But you <laughs> now you could be sleeping at 3 in the afternoon, but you come back. And you do, you sit there with the banjo and, and give a little concert every afternoon. That's right. Yep. Afternoon songs. Yeah. You, so you are, you are the streaming man. I mean, we're calling this the golden hour stream. You are the, you are the golden streamer. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> stream a little stream Say with what? me. What, what am I saying? Oh, I should have called the band Don Vappi and the Dossiers. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so you know you're you're taking use of the technology like a lot of people are, but you're special. You got a talk show, and then you got a music show in the afternoon. Someone's calling yeah. me. I got to get rid of this. Well, guy. You know, I felt <laughs> I felt like you know being in isolation. How can you be with people, and in isolation? And they call it social media, 
but usually it's uh, people sending me stuff like my sister knows a guy whose brother works for the Pentagon, and he says, and I don't want any of that stuff, right? <laughs> so I decided I'd just go live and drink my coffee on the porch and invite whoever, and it almost feels as close as you can feel to, to sitting down in a coffee shop with people. Yeah. Because they all get their coffee, and they we laugh, and we... You see their names go whizzing by on Facebook? Yeah, and they say yeah. things, you know, and they, how you doing? Where's Millie? She's only been out twice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you got people coming in from uh, Bethany Beach, Delaware, right there on the coast, Brooklyn, New York, Rio. Yeah. Santiago, Chile. Oh, Mid-city, uptown New Orleans, of course. And oh, yeah. Puerto Rico, Toronto, Abita Springs, that's over near you. All right. And Northern California, and uh, that's just scratching the surface there. Wow. So, yeah. so uh, what, what have you, has, has streaming in any way affected, uh, you know, your music? Um, yeah, it, it makes me more conscious of when I miss, <laughs> when I make a mistake or something. Uh -huh. Oh, because it's live. I'm yeah. better at, uh, I'm better at covering my mistakes. Yeah, no post-production on streaming. No, you can't, it's live. Well, I think we've done pretty well so far. We haven't had too many slips of the tongue. No, it's, it's cool. I'm, I'm kind of joking, but. It's it's fun because everything happens in the moment, and I try to read the comments while I'm playing, which can be a little confusing. Yeah, that's sometimes. that's serious multitasking. And uh, some of my some of my uh, I guess viewers are really clever and funny. Yeah. So you start laughing <laughs> so in the I middle of the song. I start laughing in the middle of song sometimes. Well, well, give us a song that comes out of uh, what you've been working on uh, lately on the porch uh, in the afternoons. Well, you know I I'm I'm. I'm really proud of the fact that my latest album has gotten all these great reviews, so I get a lot of requests for tunes. Um, this is one, is the, actually the title track from the record, called okay. The Blue Book of Storyville. Mm -hmm. So um, here we go. And we're going to do a, a little, we're going to do a different arrangement of it tonight. Okay. We're going to make it more blue. Uh, re rearrange it. More blue than book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I guess. <laughs> That's I why know, they Mike, went to the Blue Book. You know, Mike was playing it earlier, and I said, hey, man, that sounds good. Let's play it like that. So okay. I'll just let him start it wherever he starts. Well, it happened in the district Now it's all history When men from all around Got their kicks Plenty of pretty women A catalog for sinning Browse the pages, take your pick All shapes and sizes Full of surprises There for every man's desire All on display Like prepaid foreplay Love for sale, love for hire You get hooked on the book And book your hook it's the Blue Book of Storyville.
your hook It's the blue book of story, Storyville Now when all is said and done All have had their fun The morning sun comes creeping in A few hours go by The jolie vie lets out a sigh And everything begins again You see, it happened in the district Now it's all history Where men from all around got their kicks Yeah, plenty pretty women A catalog for sinning Browse the pages, take your pick You get hooked on the book And book your hook It's the blue book of story, Storyville You get hooked on the book And book your hook It's the blue book, the blue book of Storyville You get hooked on the book And book your hook It's the blue book of story Storyville That is such an interesting song. I love that song. Thank you. Well, you're, you're kind of critiquing Storyville. Usually you hear it always celebrated as a place where uh, African Americans, Creoles, all of uptown and downtown came together musically, but also it was the, the, the house in the red light district, the legal red light district. But you're kind of taking a little more of a, I don't know, you, the song's like a, almost a tragic comedy. It's, it's funny, but it's, it's also a tragedy you're recanting. Yeah, you're exactly. For, I, I mentioned that to someone. It's like you know, musicians and comedians. We tend we take these very serious subjects and yeah. kind of dance around them, but they make you think a little bit too. You know? Yeah, it's it's amazing. Uh, you're, you're also continuing to get comments uh, about banjo playing. Um, <laughs> has Don ever played a gourd banjo? I, I've not, but I did. I have seen them. Yeah, I, I've been. You know, I've, I've touched one. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you've looked into some of the sources of, uh, of uh, you know, the blues scale and, and the sources of uh, uh, the ba uh, the banjo in West Africa and, and early well, banjos in America. And yeah, I mean, pursued uh, those players today. Uh -uh. Yeah. Some of my one of my very favorite early players was Johnny St. Cyr because mm. I actually studied bass and he did Armstrong's this. banjo player. Yeah. And Jelly Roll Morton, too. And he played these bass lines on his on his guitar banjo. Huh. And then for tenor banjo players, there was Ike Robinson's one of my favorites, and uh, George Gano. Mm -hmm. He was Creole great. George Gano. Yeah, I mean, I mean Danny Barker was just an all-around favorite musician, man. He, uh, and and thinker and writer and doer and uh, hero. Yeah, you know, he was like a real mentor. For Brought me. back brass bands, did all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, but I, I like the sounds of the. The old banjos, it's, a, it's kind of a darker sound. I guess the plastic heads on, on top here made them really bright, yeah. and I never really liked that. So I, I, I did a little research and uh, talked to the company, Ohm, who makes this banjo for me, and we figured out a way to make it a little darker. Yeah. So um, an open back helps, too. Right. So. Well, I've seen, I mean, I've seen the banjos made with the possum hides and 
Buick oh, yeah. transmission seal resonators. And I mean, literally, I mean, if someone wants an instrument, they'll make them. We know all about the cigar box uh, guitars right, and fiddles, right. so there's that. But, you know, there's something that you said that reminded me, and, and I wanted to ask Richard uh, Moten a question about this, because uh, you mentioned Johnny St. Cyr, who'd been with Jelly Roll and Armstrong and then returned to New Orleans and lived the life of a plaster, kept playing banjo. So, he, you know, he was one of those classic Creoles who had the high... Uh, skills in the trades, but he also played the music. And, and Richard, in, in your life, uh, you, you've been a plumber. Yeah, uh, that's right. I've been, I was a plumber for 22 years. You got that counted, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I try, sometimes I try to forget it. but uh, uh, I was a plumber for 22 years. Yeah. Uh, but I played bass on the weekend. Like uh -huh. I told you earlier, I was a weekend warrior. And uh -huh. Played R&B and they're different with, with, with R&B bands. Yeah. But uh, I had a bass at my house, and I, I never touched it. Don used to always say, man, you got to pick up that bass and start playing. Uh -huh. you gotta, then you got to start playing that upright bass. And I said, well, I don't, I don't really have the time. I was working yeah. all these uh, crazy hours, right. you know, 12 hours Everyone a day. Everyone needs a plumber. Yeah. Yeah, there's and, leaks everywhere. In this city, everything's leaking all the time. And, and uh, people always say, well, music makes people happy. But I said, uh, being a plumber makes people a lot happier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave more joy fixing plumbing than yeah. I did playing music. Oh, uh, I but love I'm, that. I'm, but <laughs> that's interesting. Well, I mean, I think the other the other uh, profession that gives people great joy in the trades are are carpenters that can fix leaking roofs too, <laughs> because we got a lot of leaking roofs in this town, and it's been proved the last week of leaks, yeah. a lot going on. But when you were on the job plumbing, did you start? Did you ever start thinking music in your head? I mean, uh, well, when you're a musician, the music never leaves your head. Yeah, it's, it's always there. It's no always matter, there, no matter what you do. You, it's, you always hear music. But uh, when I I got on this upright bass, uh, a friend of my mother got a job at the Intercontinental Hotel, and uh, he needed a bass player. I went I went to the job, uh, and I brought my electric bass, and he said, the general manager said, oh, no, 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 we want an upright bass. Mm. So I said, well, all right, I could try it. And, you know, it was, it was close to uh, uh, Christmas time, and there was extra money involved. So yeah, I, and you had to play <laughs> in a Santa Claus outfit. Yeah, but oh, <laughs> no, I, I, I that was no, but else. I I got the bass. Uh, well, I, it was actually the neck was broken, but I got the neck fixed, and I started playing the next week over there, and it was absolutely awful. But it was the look the general manager was going after. You don't want the, <laughs> yeah. the upright yeah, bass. The sound. I don't believe that Rich is too much of a musician oh. to be awful. Maybe it wasn't up to what he wanted. Uh, well, yeah. I think I think maybe the manager didn't have the ears either, too. Well, you know, I, I want to thank you for giving up plumbing, and I'm sorry for all the people in the city that are having leaky faucets and problems with their toilets. But uh, I'm really glad that you're playing bass. You sound so great. Well, thank you. All right. Yeah. I'm glad, too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So... Uh, Clarence Johnson over there on saxophones. Tell us how, how you got into music. What part of the city did you grow up in? Uh, I was uh, born, actually, uh, at Tour Hospital, and my folks were living in uh, the Lower Ninth, uh, ninth Ward at the time, and uh, my first recollection of life uh, found me in New Orleans East, actually. So uh, that's where I uh, grew up as a child and uh, uh, got my first drum set when I was about uh, four years old. So I actually started on drums. Mm. And uh, I moved over to uh, saxophone uh, with the uh, suggestion of my godfather. He was a big uh, Gato Barbieri fan. Oh, Gato. And, yes, sir. Yeah, and, uh, yeah so, love so he, Gato. He talked to me about that. My dad was a drummer, so he's the one that initially, uh, you know, suggested drums and brought me a drum set. Hey. And I, I, I tend to lean towards a more of a percussive style uh, in my playing, and I think that has a lot to do with, you know, starting out on drums. Mm -hmm. uh, also, growing up in this city, this is such oh, yeah. a percussive town. It's a yeah, uh, rhythm town. Ri 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 yeah. Very strong rhythm town, yeah. so that's kind of uh, the origins of my story. Well, you know, it's interesting to me, when I think about it, so many people know New Orleans through Second Line uh, and and uh, going down the street playing music, of course, with a jazz funeral or Mother's Day or a Saint's Day or uh, as Danny Barker used to say, the Paul Parrot's holiday or something. But but um, 
we have instruments here, three instruments you would not see on the second line. You don't see the banjo. You don't see the bass. You see a tuba or a sousaphone. And I ain't seen anybody push the piano down the street, <laughs> maybe on a truck now. But you do see a saxophone, yeah. of course, trumpets, yeah. and you have the trap set spread out and all that. So we thank you for your service. Thank you. In the clubs of New Orleans, making that beautiful music. Thank you. And last but not least, over on the piano, Mike Esseno. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah, and, and you're a born here, Baton Rougean river guy. Yeah, I was born here um, in Hotel Du. Hotel uh, Du, du. yeah, God's Hotel. And then, I mean, you know, my <laughs> folks grew up here, all my family's here, but uh, mom and dad moved up to BR for college. BR, that's, uh, that's short for Baton Rouge. Baton and college, Rouge. college is short for LSU. Yeah, Tiger Town. <laughs> Tiger Town. Yeah, and then, um, you know, studied classical music as a kid. But my mom loved um, Dr. John, Louis Armstrong, all, you know, all the stuff, all the products of this great culture. So grew up listening to that, but it wasn't until, I guess, um, in college, I met the legendary Alvin Batiste, mm. who was teaching at Southern up there. Right. And that kind of got me back to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it took so a while. Great. But, it, you know, he introduced me to so many um, so many of his colleagues down here and so many great musicians like you know, Don Vappi and all these guys. You know, so. Well, the classical training and, and, and the oral tradition mm -hmm. all can go together in jazz and always have, I think. And so you're, you're part of that world. And... Um, Right now, I'd like to have everybody out there in uh, streaming land give these guys a big round of applause. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> I believe it's shaking down here in the Marigny. Don, what you got shaking next for us? Oh, I, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, what can we do that's a little hmm. different? Let's see. How, I, we just did a kind of blue. Let's, let's do a sing-along. You read um, my mind, Don. Let's do a sing-along. Everybody, y'all can sing along out there, too. Yeah, the whole crew yeah. gonna sing maybe That's too. That's right. The whole, everybody, everybody here. Yeah. Engineers, lighting. You know, janitors, whoever's here. Okay. Park service rangers. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's the classic. Elaba. Elaba. J'ai tout la paix et j'ai mangé plein. J'ai fait un bon moment, moi j'ai trop. Et ça fait moi malade. Et là-bas, et là-bas, et là-bas, et là-bas, et là-bas, chérie. Et là-bas, chérie. Comment ça va? Comment ça va? va? Et là-bas, et là-bas, et là-bas, et là-bas, et là-bas, chérie. Et Comment ça va? Let's get a plumber song. Get a plumber song. Ha, ha, ha. 
Okay, the, the biggest line of uh, the night so far since we gave you all the others is hanging out with Don is great. Oh, that's Oh, nice. yeah. All right. It is great. S same here. Hanging with you is great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got a little bit more time here before the clock on the clubhouse wall says it's, uh, you know, got to go. What, yeah. what, do we, what do you think? You know what? And, and I confirmed this with one of my track one friends, Tracy huh? Griffin. When I was young, the ice cream truck played this song. Oh, I know what's coming. You know, and I didn't know what it was, but it was. I found out from Willie Humphrey the song was called Red Wing, and then I had this dream that the truck, it's Red Wing ice cream was the name of the truck, and Tracy confirmed it. All right. Because he called me, said, "Man, I love that you played the ice cream truck song on your on your record." And, and a lot of people know this is a, it got turned into an old labor song, and uh, it's an old fiddle tune, yeah, and. Yeah. It's, a everything, it's an everything song. Among multiple genres. So y'all can grab your banjos and fiddles and trumpets and clarinets. And, and your ice cream cone and ice put cream all, the, cone and all the flavors on. We're going to end with the ice cream song here. It's called Red Wing.
we're getting comments from people about ice cream songs now. Oh. Of course, the one closest to home is from Gentilly. It says, uh, that same ice cream truck song when I was a kid was played all around Gentilly. I guess that guy got around. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. uptown, he was downtown, because Tracy was in Gentilly. All right. But I used to hear him on Coliseum and Valance. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that's such an old-timey sounding, like, uh, you know, 1880s, 1890s. Feels like a little bit like an up-tempo march. And yeah. It was a union made, I think, in the labor movement. It, yeah, it, it fits a lot of things. That's that cool. guy had a good business. He was <laughs> going all over town. Man. <laughs> well, uh, you know, um, before we go, we, I think we should at least give him uh, one encore out there. I mean, I can hear him cheering across yeah? the world here. Yeah. And uh, somebody did say, Don, play some more Creole jazz. So I'm just, you know, going to pass that one on to you for okay. In the What It's Worth world. I know you know all those old uh, songs of Albert Nicholas and Danny Barker and yeah, uh, um, all those guys. Maybe one of those or others do, you've been um, digging into, whatever suits you. Maybe do Sally Down. Sally Down Bonjour. Kind oh, of like yeah. The lady going to the marketplace. That's right. Filled with double entendres. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, I'll show you. Uh, we'll, stay, we'll stick to the single entendres for, for any yeah, translations yeah. emerge. Mamza Josephine, let us stand on Lady Dauphine. Like Lee Seon Seon Bobine. Salé dame, salé dame, mon bonjour. Salé dame, on les aime moi. Ron noir coton. Salé dame, salé dame, salé dame, mon bonjour. Salé dame, on les aime moi. Ron noir coton. Si vous quoi on peut pour moi, il est dans la fruit cassée. Pas oublié pour mettre la sauce tomate fait qu'on coque à l'ange vert. Salé dame, salé dame, salé dame, mon bonjour. Salé dame, on les aime moi, ron noir d'auto. Salé dame, salé dame, salé dame, mon bonjour. Salé dame, on les aime moi, ron noir d'auto. and friends certainly no enemies in here tonight no enemies if they if there were any they're gone yeah all right so let's thank them we got uh, richard moden over here on bass all right thousand hands clapping 
one hand clapping at a time. <laughs> and uh, Mike Esno over there on piano. Glad to have you. And Clarence Johnson on saxophone coming out of the Ninth Ward and giving us some fine uh, ripping and running saxophone and jazz and soul. Don Vappi here on the banjo and the vocals. Such a great sound, gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank yeah, you and we'll say, uh, Lord have mercy, Boku, to everyone uh, watching and listening around the world. And since you're in about, uh, I don't know, 12 or 13 time zones out there, we're in central U.S. time. We'll just say, uh, what, buenas noches, bonsoir, guten nacht, and good night from the golden hour and American roots here in New Orleans. <laughs>